What's up guys? My name is Dashy and I speedrun Crash Team Racing. And I know there's been a lot of confusion with the new Nitro Fueled remaster coming not remaster, remake, whatever. Remake coming out. Uh, a lot of people getting into the game or, or remembering the game and a lot of people that have played the game a lot coming out and talking about things like Sacred Fire, Speed Ghost, USF, Zaffy Fire, etc, 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 and nobody, not really nobody, but a lot of people not knowing what that means, and um, there's plenty of resources that explain it, but I kind of want to just give a quick, short, five-minute, like, tutorial or explanation of what a lot of these things are, maybe not five minutes, because I'm really bad at being concise, but it's like, you know, this is going to help hopefully explain and show specifically what a lot of these things look like. And a lot of these things, surprisingly enough, you probably actually did without even knowing it. But they just have a term that describes what they are uh, just because, you know, they're a mechanic within the game. And for some reason, some 15 year olds or whatever decided to name these things because that's how you got epic names like Sacred Fire and Ultra or Ultimate Sacred Fire whatever so anyway so let's just get this started uh the first thing i'm going to show is just what coco's base speed is i'm using coco of course because this is what we we use for speed runs and any percent normally i guess a lot of people have started using the heavy characters lately but well that's a whole different story for the longest time we used coco so for coco you can see that when you are just driving normally no mini turbos whatsoever her speedometer shows that she is right around where it turns yellow it's halfway between the one two three yeah the third bar and the fourth bar on the speedometer when she starts mini turboing that bar will that needle will obviously go up and once you hit your third mini turbo she will hit the perfect 90 degrees at that very not the very last bar into that past the red but the the one that's straight up so when she hits three mini turbos, she'll be, that's her top speed right there normally before she hits a regular boost pad. And that's how you can tell where her regular mini turbo speed is. Now, so that's not referred to as anything. If anything, people will call it fire sometimes, but it's just speed. Next, we've got sacred fire. Sacred fire is when you've been mini turboing at least once because you can basically just slide over the top of a boost pad and it will give it to you. So as long as you're mini turboing at the exact same time or you know within, within a few seconds before whatever of hitting a turbo pad, you will gain what is called Sacred Fire. Sacred Fire you can note with the engine sound or the speedometer, it, whichever suits your, your your needs to help you differentiate between the two you can also actually use the the fire coming out of the exhaust uh, that's kind of harder to see in my opinion i actually personally use the engine sounds but that's just me the engine sounds is a lot higher pitched obviously the speedometer you can see will actually go past that that 90 degree line we were talking about and starts getting closer to the very edge of the speedometer so you can tell then that you have what is called sacred fire that's all there is to actually be said about sacred fire specifically now we can transition to into what's the uh, their whole reserves system is and that's pretty intuitive because it's literally called reserves and you can kind of think of it as a literal reserve tank i guess for your boosts uh the best way to describe it in my opinion is ever like this is theoretical numbers but every boost let's say your for the bar to fill up takes about 0.9 seconds but if you get a full boost off of that bar it actually would last you a full second so across the the uh, whole gap of a triple boost slide it would only take 2.7 seconds but it would give you three seconds worth of boost you transition directly into another power slide that would do another triple boost and ba bam now you've got an excess of 0.6 uh seconds of boost these are th theoretical numbers it's actually probably a little bit bigger than that i would assume but that's basically what the reserves is the time of the boost and how long it lasts is actually stored as a value for every fullness of uh, of the boost and obviously the fuller the better basically what happens is the more you boost the more excess gets thrown onto the end of the duration of that boost and then once you hit a boost pad that works the same way and also what what's happening here is even that works with the mini turbos if you've mini turboed like i said let's say 12 times in a row 
you'll be able to stop boosting and you'll, it'll last you an extra like two seconds without you doing anything. And that works the exact same way with the Sacred Fire. You'll run over a boost pad, you'll have all these reserves, and bam, you don't, e you don't even need to actually boost and you'll be able to hold that. But if you want to hold it, you obviously need to just keep on boosting. And that's obviously the whole speed tech of the game. You get Sacred Fire and you don't lose it. The, the main idea of, of the game is unless you need to take a U-turn, unless you need to break, unless you need to do something that's going to force you to lose fire you just don't want to lose fire so just always be mini turboing you always keep that sacred fire and obviously like i said before as the indicators you look at the needle on the speedometer or you can listen to the engine sounds or even look at the flames at the exhaust once those go, go down back to what it looked like back when you were mini turboing you know you lost sacred fire so hopefully that adequately explains what sacred fire is and kind of how the reserve systems work so next i'm going to talk about what uh ultimate sacred fire ultra sacred fire usf whichever some people like to call it um and i'm going to use my favorite track engine labs to describe this so similar to sacred fire this is basically the speed that is given to you by a select number of boost pads within the game. Every single track in Warp 4 has a what we recall as a super turbo pad, and then the entirety of turbo track is made up of these super turbo pads. Basically, these turbo pads were kind of designed, at least to my understanding, to get you enough speed to get over these larger gaps. The boost pad is programmed to give you an extra amount of speed than what the regular boost pads were giving you and we exploit this and what whether or not you want to say it, it was intended or not who really knows because turbo track is kind of a reason that i would say that it was kind of intended because there's no actual jumps on that track and then there's also the cheat code to literally turn every turbo pad into a super turbo pad either here nor there so what you end up doing is you you hit this with reserves similar to how you would for Sacred Fire with a regular turbo pad and you get what it, what we call Ultimate Sacred Fire which as you can see with the needle on the speedometer it actually just maxes out. Um if you wanted to give it an actual number it would be actually way past the the end of the speedometer and it is much faster than any other you know, speed that you would attain normally. And it works in a similar way with the reserve systems as you have more reserves and the ultra sacred fire will last longer. Now, like I said, you don't want to jump. Uh, we're using, again, uh, engine labs as a example for this one. The very first one is, you know, that little gap that you're jumping across that where the, the track crosses over. And you don't jump. You just ride it across while having uh, Sacred Fire in this case, but you don't actually need Sacred Fire. You just need reserves. So you, you just ride across it with reserves and you pick up this speed. And as long as you don't power slide, you don't get a boost jump, you don't use a turbo, you don't hit a turbo pad, you're able to hold this speed until you, know, you hit one of those things or until you... Uh, until you run out of reserves and of course obviously if you hit the brakes or if you uh you know, get hit by something whatever that's obviously going to camp cancel it as well that's what uh the ultra sacred fire does and yeah it it's pretty easy to understand from there it's it's literally just the exact same as sacred fire is except obviously you're going a ton faster and you can't boost for it so again yeah, same thing the more reserves you have the longer it lasts so the last thing i'm going to talk about is Speed Ghosts, which nobody's really talked about with, with too much, but they're kind of easy to explain. But I kind of want to throw out a disclaimer that I don't think they're actually in Nitro Fueled. But I, they are, but they're in a different way. At least, I'm not, I haven't played the demo, but looking at how it, it plays, it's, it's different. But okay, so I'm going to explain what Speed Ghosts are in the original game. Basically, again, similar to how all these other mechanics are working, you have reserves built up. You go and you go down a downhill. Now, first I'll show you what it looks like even without reserves built up, even without mini turboing. You'll see that Coco's uh, speedometer will actually basically top out. And she gains a ton of speed, even though she's not doing anything. She's just driving down a downhill. And if you do what we call frogging, which is where you 
we'll just say spam jump, but realistically how what you actually do to do this is you hold down one shoulder button, for me it's L1, and then you spam the other one, which is R1. Um, frogging is a completely different mechanic that basically is, what it's doing is it takes the left, or the L1 input, takes it as a jump, you push R1, it accepts that as a jump, and then once you let off of the R1, it takes L1 as a jump again. So it's basically assuming that you're constantly jumping, and in this game, while you are hopping, you don't actually lose speed. Or you lose, you don't, it's not that you don't lose speed, you lose it very slowly. You're, so you're able to hold these speeds a lot longer. So Speed Ghost, again, you is basically what's happening is you're going down this downhill, you're getting this downhill speed. Uh, what you do to get a Speed Ghost specifically, what we what we call it, like a good Speed Ghost, is you're boosting down this hill. And you don't boost after the hill, you, you do it during the hill, and then you just go down to the bottom of the hill, and then once you flatten out, basically, you just spam Froggy. You'll be able to hold that speed, that downhill hill speed, despite the fact that you're on flatland for, you know, however long you've got reserves for. It's a little bit more finicky with this one because it has to do with, you know, the actual geometry of the level. So sometimes you'll, you'll hit a little uphill and it'll cancel it all out. But the speed goes, it, it's, it's kind of weird just because it has to do with the geometry of the game and it's kind of finicky in a lot of different places. Some of them very consistent some of them are just little tiny like small polygons worth of downhill where like <laughs> it can affect it or whatever and it's just whatever it's it's hard to explain outside of go downhill and downhill make you go fast <laughs> and reserves make that thing last longer so hopefully that kind of helped you out a little bit and shameless self plug of course um I, I do speedrun this game. I go, I play it live on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash I the dash. Same as the, the YouTube username. And obviously I want to give a shout out to everybody else that speedruns this game. Because I am not the best person that speedruns this game. By far, I am only within like the top quarter of the leaderboards or whatever that is. Oh, wait. Quarter? Like 20%? I don't know. Whatever, I, I'm not the best, I play an emulator, and I don't do a bunch of skips because I'm lazy, but everybody in that community has worked their butts off to really grind out a lot of this information on the game, and also, they're just insane. A lot of the, a lot of the top runners are actually just insane to watch so i would highly suggest go to speedrun.com if you if you don't have time to watch a full stream of somebody playing this game or whatever and ask questions go watch either the the agdq was it agdq or sgq natty natty one did a ctr any percent run for games done quick a couple years back did a lot of explanations about stuff um or of course you can watch some of the high ranking runs on speedrun.com uh go just search ctr and you can look up any percent warpless or you can even watch the 101 percent stuff if you really want to or even you know you can check out the any percent boards which is literally just a battle mode glitch which isn't really that fun to watch at all but neither nevertheless uh again i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys learned something and feel free to ask questions if if i didn't make something completely clear and yeah, hope you guys have a good day.